I think Duana um, has like a safe space for the students of color on campus. I think it's a very inclusive and um, encouraging space. I think it encourages people to speak their mind and also, you know, um, create their art. Duana has been a space that fights institution completely. And they went on strike and they rallied and they organized between the other UCs, you know, to like figure out a way to get ethnic studies to make Kreza department, which it still isn't, you know, like it's just been kind of, it's interesting. Um, but I think right now the way we combat it is just by having an inclusive space where again, like whiteness does not touch it. Like there isn't, there is no academia. You don't have to talk a certain way or write a certain way or look a certain way in order to be regarded as artistic or professional or whatever you want to say. Like, I think it's just like a space where we try to like reject academic norms of like what it means to be an artist or what writing has value, you know? Um, and I think we're doing a good job. And I think people feel inspired to like make art that is like, only for them and their community. You just have to feel good about being students here because the institution doesn't want us to be, to be completely honest with you. Like, I'm not really sure if this is still within our mission. I think what really needs to be done is that departments that we have like to have the same amount of clout as other departments have. You know, like for community studies to be on par with like, the STEM courses and so on. And I think that's really what we want. We're not advocating as much for like a specific creation of a college or a, a department. It's more like, can you give the departments that we are all part of as much credibility and power as other departments? We are the background of the university. Like there's a reason why this university is an HSI now, right? But it's not because the institution itself is a Hispanic serving institution. It's because the Latinos in the institution are serving other Latinos. Like, it's not about the institution at all. It's because the Latino students who came before us made all these programs and did all these things to make it a livable space for us. Because that's why I feel comfortable being here, because I saw that there's 29 percent Latinos. And I was like, cool. I'm hoping Duanas is a newspaper again, you know, or I'm hoping like they're on the same like level as CHP at some point, you know, like I'm really, really hoping it turns into something really big. Think locally, you know, like do what you can in the space that you are and things will look better. Draw inspiration from what's going on around the world, but act with what you could do right here, right now. Like I cannot stop some certain things from happening in the world with the level of power I have now. But that doesn't mean I can't write about it. And it doesn't mean I can't talk about it, which is what has like helped me so much in Duanas. Uh, as one of like as one of the only I feel like few males in, in the club, I don't see a strong dynamic of like at least of power in terms of gender in the club. Um I mean, if anything, I'm more here to learn. I think it's it's always a responsibility um, for everyone to combat patriarchy in all its forms. Um, because like you say, yeah, it does create these hierarchies um, that we see like in so many kind of systems. And um, and I'd say for for, for Tuana specifically, um, I I do I I can see patriarchy affecting it because I think um, patriarchy has always kind of been like a suppression of the freedom of expression of like um, emotional vulnerability. That's how I see it in terms of like how it affects uh, artistic communities. So I think it's it's super important for us to kind of bear that in mind um, here in this space, for sure. I joined Tuanas like near the end of 2021. So I still am a friend of Leslie Marquez, one of the signers, and 
her just talking about it and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then me and my roommate at the time decided to go to some meetings. I can't think of anything this year, but when I first joined, the first few meetings that I went to were over Zoom. There was obviously like that transition from going remote to in person. And I feel like maybe there was not as many people going to the meetings, but I feel just, just like more promoting the club and social media outreach and tabling. We've been able to gather more people. So I know historically, Donas didn't start off as a publication. I believe that it was like a, a space, like a club for students of color and allies to join together in activism, including the hunger strikes. And now, fast forward, it is mainly a form of publication. We do the yearly publications, but it's still a space for students of color, the club in itself, to connect and share experiences. I think that Donas will be able to expand in the sense that more people will be aware about it and possibly join. Because I feel like even now, when I tell people, like, oh, I'm in Donas, like, classmate or something, they don't know what it is. Like, I feel a lot of people still don't know Donas on campus. So I definitely feel that in the future, it will have more recognition. I feel that Donas allows as a club, like as a gathering space for students of color, where we can just connect, share experiences, struggles. And I mean, the publication itself, it's meant for students of color to have a voice and to publish <laughs> the artwork. In Tona's meetings, we like almost always do like check-ins. We all share our struggles, but then at the end, you know what, we're, we're all struggling, enduring, and we will get through it. and achieve whatever it is that we want to. As students of color who have unfortunately experienced or may have experienced institutional racism, there's definitely like similarities in what we have experienced or like areas that we can connect to. I feel like just having a space to express it is liberating in itself. Personally, I feel like I can't express those topics just anywhere like freely and Donna's allows for that. It's just such a good space. Just the people there, um, like its mission, what we're for. To be involved with Donna's, even if you're just a member, um, there's always something that you can contribute. Before I even found out about Donna's, because I didn't know that this space like even existed, um, I was just feeling in such a depressive state because I was like, I am part of two press organizations, yet like the people around me and the people involved in these orgs are all white. Like it was a very white, like dominated space. And I was one of the few people of color. I just didn't see any like POC representation, I would say. And so I was looking to find like space and just like if it wasn't for Thuanas, I would have really like tried to create a space as well where it was run by people of color for people of color. Like that's what I'm all about. So that's really what like got me so engaged. I guess one of our biggest obstacles this year has been balancing community and production. Because, of course, um, when it comes to being like a press or there's the pressure of getting an actual magazine out um, and getting it like physically printed. And honestly, it's just been amazing to see how like big Buenos has grown like within these like last couple of months and seeing like all the members that are so deeply interested and passionate about Buenos, like to the point where we had to move out of McHenry where we had to go to the Cresby Writing Center and then move out of the Cresby Writing Center because you know we couldn't fit everyone and we've had conversations like this before where we're like okay so Thuanas is supposed to be a communities of color org why is there like why are all the leaders like Latina you know like that is a good question to ask um, I would like to see more like you know, culture, like different cultural like involvement um, and different like POC as well, just like emphasizing that we aren't just like a Latina org, like, you know, the space is for everybody. Through our like member meetings, we usually talk about what's going on on campus and just like making people aware of um, the ways that we've been discriminated um, against and the ways 
like, you know, things that we've suffered mainly because we are P of POC um, and how, you know, the injustices involved in that. Hopefully through the journalism committee as well, like we are able to publish these stories and bring to light, um, you know, everything that POC students have been, ha like have had to undergo um, because of this university and because of the society that has implicated um, these issues. This org was built out of action. I mean, like its history started with the hunger strike and a fight for ethnic studies. Like, um, and I feel like that's like a lot to live up to. And I, and I feel like there's so much going on in the university that needs change and needs rallying and needs, um, and I would say like needs to be brought more attention. So for action for me, um, personally it looks like getting in community, getting united and fighting for a common cause. I, I hope that the future generation of Tuanas has more coraje than me um, because like, you know, I feel like coraje just gives a drive to get shit done um, and to be more politically involved. And I hope the next generation of Tuanas is so unapologetic with just being outspoken and with like taking up space you know, there has to be more, like, sometimes at the end of it, like, we all are kind of fighting a common cause. And, you know, some people, like, add different names to things. But at the end, like, if we really, like, sit down and have these conversations, like, you know, we have a lot more similarities and differences. Um, And I feel like just, like, that would make us, like, all of us together would be so poderoso. Like, it's crazy. And I feel like that's, that's what we need.